what I wanted to do was give people a, a, an opportunity just to ask any questions, any, any, anything from the field um, that, uh, that, that we grab. And uh, yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Michael Dudley here. Um, we're developing software all the time with Ben. A question I always have at the end, particularly when you dream up new products, is how are we going to sell it? You know, how do you sell it? How have you gone to market with this thing? Yeah, that's the. I mean, that, <laughs> that's a tough question, and you know, it's it's amazing. Um, you know, if you think about that metric, seventy percent of um, internal software projects never deliver their business case. I, I just couldn't imagine how much venture capital is going into software products that ultimately are never generating any revenue, let alone return on capital. Um, I, I'll share with you our dirty little secret. <laughs> you know, say so that if you, you read some of the articles in the press about us, they'll say you know disruption and transform. You know about our model and stuff. But a, a big part of our dirty little secret is that we're a great sales and marketing company that just happens to be a law firm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you do. You've got a, you've got a great team. Yeah, and so uh, you know we um, in terms of in terms of selling, so we're fortunate we had pretty good relationships already. But if you can imagine the challenge we have, is that I. General counsels have no technology, like no legal specific technology, so they don't know how to buy it. The second thing is the end user is the marketing team, and sometimes they try and shift the budget over to the, the marketing budget. So it's a two-step sales process. So you know the, the issue we have is not people agreeing that this is the right solution and they should do it. Um, it is around navigating that um, has been a challenge, and we have a number of a number of deals that have had very long sales cycles, which shouldn't have. Um, but ultimately, our, if you want to know, our distribution approach is, is, is simple. We, uh, we write best practice, do research on best practices and how to run legal functions effectively. Um, we then have an inbound, uh, so inside sales team that set up meetings for our commercial directors based upon sharing the new, newest findings from our research. And um, that's a conversation not many general counsels uh, have because no one else is sort of providing that research. So they're interested each month, each quarter to catch up with us. Um, and then we have senior sales guys basically who go out and um, you know, hopefully identify issues and um, bring them aboard. Great. And, and, and it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a really, it's a very well oiled machine. You've got a question? Yeah. Andrew, good presentation. H how do you retain your staff? What do you, how do you incentivize staff and, and retain them? <laughs> I, I, think, I think, you know, the, the, the challenge everyone has and. I'm the same. It's kind of you get boring of asking other you know, business leaders like, you know, that question. And um, I, I wish I had a particularly compelling uh, answer. My philosophy is is twofold. One is to try and present us as a, as a really exciting place to work. Um, and so once people understand our story, they're typically reasonably excited. Um, the mistakes I've made are, are long and 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 um, and many, but. Uh, I think about a couple of things. One is, does this guy, is someone really excited about the long-term journey here? Um, the second is we've got a really rigorous interview process. So I just prior to here had a meeting with two of our newest hires and, uh, and they were just saying, oh, we couldn't believe, we didn't think we were going to get the job because there were so many steps in the interview process. But early on I made mistakes because <coughs> I rushed hires and followed my gut and all those sorts of um, foolish mistakes, which now we're highly systematic, we do behavioural testing, um, we do role plays of the particular role. We actually um, sometimes get you know, the last hire in the tech space. You know, I, I'm not a tech expert, so I get people like, who are better at evaluating someone's technical skills than me to evaluate them. Um, but, you know, it's ultimately the biggest challenge every business faces, isn't it? What's the price difference, Andy, compared to the traditional way of running that particular product? Where the lawyer does it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting thing on pricing. It's something that I think a lot about, read a lot about, and still don't have the perfect answer to pricing. We're just going live with our newest solution, and you know, <laughs> it's kind of a bit of a hope and and tr uh, trying lots of things before we get to the right answer. To answer the specific question, one of the things that we're very conscious of at Plexus is that we don't want to be perceived as cheap. We want to be perceived as good value. So if you think about, lawyers would almost never trade quality off to get cost. Um, and, and I kind of think from a business standpoint, grabbing market share by discounting is kind of um, uh, uh, a short-minded short, short -minded approach. Um, so what we try and make sure that the client is aware of is what is the total cost of providing the service currently. So what a, uh, quite often our, our competitor is our client. They're currently providing this service internally with their own internal legal um, team. Um, so we actually step them through a process to think through 
how many of these activities you're doing a year, uh, how, uh, uh, how much time do you think your team is spending, how much time do you really think your team is spending, because they always underestimate that one, what's the total loaded cost, what's the opportunity cost of the marketing team going back and forth, how long does this take, how much would you value shortening that cycle down to the same day. Um, and so we're actually a lot more expensive than, than having an internal person uh, provide the, the same service. If you look at Parity versus another law firm, we're probably 20% more cost effective, but it's not, you know, we, we, could, we could discount, but um, we want people to understand that this is about value, not cost. And, uh, uh, and ultimately we say to, you know, we've got a fair credible statement now that's saying, well, look, all these other guys had the exact same approach as you, no one's ever returned back to the old ways of doing this. It, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because when you think about automating, you would have thought that you could automate the process in, and the, the default mindset that I would have is we're going to smash the price. That's actually how we're going to go in there and win it. And it's really interesting to see someone who's doing really well but is actually using technology but not actually pulling, pulling, the, pulling the, uh, the, the, the bottom out of the price. Yeah, I, th I think the, the other thing to say is like make sure the client is aware of what the greatest benefit is because they run to cost. They say, oh, it's technology's got to be cheaper. But you know, I say to them, look, my dad had an 82, Nokia 8210 until about a year ago. <laughs> and uh, none of us would want to go back to that, although you could buy one of those phones on eBay for 10 bucks uh, because an iPhone's so, so superior in terms of what it delivers us in terms of value. And you think about it, you're, you're in a, you've got to run a trade promotion and you're a marketing executive somewhere and it's normally a two-week turnaround and you've left it a bit late. Um, all of a sudden there's a lot of press, pressure and stress around that, whereas you know, these guys, the, the, the speed of turnaround is, is radically better. Um, we're, probably, we're, we're probably pretty close to, to wrapping up. We, can do, we could do one more question if we had one. Anyone else got a question they'd like to finish off with? No, well, why don't we give Andy a, 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 a word? Thanks, guys.